Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Season 4 is now upon us, and man, I don't know what to say in this video. Like, I have an idea of what I want to say, but like, God's in a weird place. I suppose I should start by asking a very simple question here, and then laying out what I think of Season 4 so far here with Black Ops Cold War, and then just discussing Black Ops Cold War in general, and then let you guys draw your own conclusions down in the comment section below. The question for this video is am I the problem, right? Am I the problem? Is Cold War in as bad a state as I think it is? Or is the problem actually me and the game is doing just fine? That's the question for this video. And with that being said, let's jump into what I think of Season 4 as well as Black Ops Cold War as a whole. So a few days ago, Season 4 dropped. As you guys know, it brought with it a new map in the form of Collateral. It brought a remake in the form of Hijacked. There's a new special weapon in the form of the Nail Gun. Then, of course, we have a couple of guns on the Battle Pass, but that's pretty much it. There is a new game mode for multiplayer, but it's completely and utterly awful. And there is a new zombies outbreak region which i suppose people enjoy that but since i'm a multiplayer focused channel we're gonna focus just on multiplayer here today and i streamed the new season yesterday right i streamed the game i was playing the new maps experiencing the new content and i quickly found myself fuck bored i, I was bored after like less than an hour of playing and especially even though i haven't played cod in like a couple of weeks an hour into a brand new season I was bored. Even while playing with my friends and while streaming, talking to chat, I found myself bored. And that's definitely not a good thing, right? Hijacked is hijacked, I suppose. Virtually nothing has changed about the map, but with skill-based matchmaking, even after not playing COD for a couple of weeks, it seemed like I had to double or triple the score of everybody on my own team just to barely win or barely lose, which is never fun, right? Especially in a casual public lobby to have to play like that just to barely win or barely lose. And when it comes to collateral, I only got to play it one time, so my opinion isn't really formed yet. The map itself does not have its own playlist, and therefore, to play the new map, you either run around in a private match against bots, or you search wherever your favorite game mode is, Team Deathmatch, Dom, Search, or whatever, and then just eventually hope that the new map shows up in the rotation. But we got to play it one time. It seemed okay. Like, it gives off vibes from that cave map from Modern Warfare 2019, but it actually has a good layout, which is nice, I suppose. There's lots of close quarters fighting and some good flank routes. But again, I only got to play the map one time, so my impressions are just that. They're impressions. They're first impressions. Now, both here in the comments, what do you guys think of Collateral if you've been able to play it more than one time so far? The nail gun, when it comes to that, it's locked behind the tedious challenge and the new light machine gun and the new assault rifle are on the battle pass, which is good, but to unlock them, you have to play the game a bunch or spend money, and since I'm not spending money on the battle pass, I'm going to have to play a bunch to unlock the new weapons, so my opinion of the new weapons has not yet been formed, just like the new Collateral map, and outside of that, I would say that Cold War is just Cold War. Right, Season 4 didn't really do much to innovate the game, and most importantly, it didn't do anything to correct a lot of the problems that the Call of Duty player base has with the game, and these problems are very much real, considering there isn't a whole lot of player base even left right now, right? Because it's 2021, and because we have access to tools like COD Tracker, we have a lot of insight into the Call of Duty player base, and the numbers that we have are not good. Like, take a look at this here, guys. This is how many kills I have. These are my stats right here. This is how many kills I have within Black Ops Cold War. A measly 25,730 kills over the course of the 217 days since this game came out. And those 25,000 kills have me sitting at the top 2.5% of players in the entire world across all platforms. Like, how insane is that? That is absolutely mind-blowing. But let's go ahead and take that just a little bit further. If we divide my total kills, mind you, kills that place me in the quote-unquote prestigious top 2.5% of all players across all platforms, if we divide those kills by the amount of days that since the game has come out, we find that I'm only averaging about 119 kills a day. And I'm still top 2.5% in the entire world. 119 kills a day is nothing. Right, that's the equivalent of playing five games of Team Deathmatch and getting 25 kills a game. That's like an hour's worth of playtime, maybe, and I'm top 2.5% in the entire world? That's insane, right? That is absolutely mind-blowing. What we can extrapolate from this is that people simply aren't playing Black Ops Cold War. 
They may be played at launch, but they're not playing it anymore. Aside from a very small and very dedicated player base of sweaty CDL skins, Black Ops Cold War has a very tiny player base compared to the previous Call of Duty titles, and we know this simply just by looking at leaderboards. Well, you may be thinking, why is this, right? Why does Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War have so many fewer players as compared to the previous Call of Duty titles? Well, I think the reason why is partly, honestly, due to Warzone, right? But I genuinely also believe, in my heart of hearts, I believe that the reason why the vast majority of casual players have moved on to Warzone and they don't play Cold War anymore is because the game itself is so inconsistent and there's so little content to actually play the game for, right? People go to Warzone because it's the popular game. They jump in the Cold War multiplayer every now and then because they want to level up their guns for Warzone, but then they quickly leave and go back and play Warzone, right? Meanwhile, people that still want to play normal multiplayer, there's nothing for us to do here. Right? And I feel so Treyarch and Activision, they know, they have their internal data, so they know that the player base for Cold War is smaller than usual. They also know that Vanguard is coming out in roughly four or five months, so they figure, what the hell? There's no point in fixing all the core problems with the game, but that's just it, right? That's, that's, a, that's the crux of the entire situation. A big reason why people are leaving, not only because people like Warzone, but they're also leaving because those core problems aren't being fixed, but they're not being fixed because there isn't a player base to actually motivate Treyarch and Activision to actually fix things. It's a very vicious Catch-22. It's like I mentioned earlier, I got on yesterday ready to try out the new season and I found myself bored after an hour. And why is that, right? Why was I bored after an hour of a brand new season of COD? Well, the reason is, is because I have nothing left to do in the game. I've barely played Cold War in the grand scheme of things. I average maybe an hour a day over the course of the entire game being out. And even then, I've done everything that there is to do within this game. I got Dark Matter, despite Dark Matter not working on half the guns in the game, and outside of that, there is literally nothing else for you to work towards. 100 percenter does not exist, so doing all the multiplayer challenges is completely pointless. There is no in-game currency to unlock and grind for, and there's no supply drop cases to save up or anything like that. There is nothing besides a shop, right? So after you get Dark Matter in this game, there is nothing left for you to do besides wait for a brand new season, get the new guns off the battle pass, get dark matter on those guns, and hope to god that the camo actually works on those particular guns. That's pretty much it. This is such a stark contrast to the previous Call of Duty titles. Back in Call of Duty World War II, not only did you have the standard progression of leveling up and prestiging and weapon camos and so on and so forth, but you also had armory credits in that game that you got for completing daily and weekly challenges, and you could use those armory credits to purchase different cosmetics for your weapons as well as for your character via the in-game shop, which was pretty cool. And you could also even buy full-on DLC weapons with your armory credits without the need to get lucky or buy supply drops or anything like that. It was a fantastic system. On top of this, you also had a reason to get the Prestige Master because that had an actual normal Prestige system. You had a reason to get the Prestige Master because once you got there, you got a special uniform for your character as well as a unique animated camo and even after prestige master you still had a reason to keep on playing because every 100 levels or so of your prestige master you got a new unique uniform for your soldier as well as a new unique animated camouflage in a game that didn't really have very many animated camos to speak of so it was definitely one of the more prestigious items in the game and you got it for grinding the game and actually playing the game in black ops 4 we had a similar system we of course did have the battle pass in black ops 4 which was free by the way, so therefore, every time a new season came out, people were excited to actually try to complete the battle pass because it was a bunch of seasonal rewards that you got for playing the game, which was enjoyable. But on top of that, we had the ability to save up supply drops. Now, I'm not here to defend supply drops. Supply drops were a cancer within the Call of Duty scene for many, many, many years, right? I don't want them to come back. But one aspect of supply drops back in Black Ops 4 was you could save up your supply drops instead of opening them and then exchange 50 supply drops for a DLC weapon of your choice. You also had daily challenges for multiplayer, zombies, and blackout, which not only awarded you experience, but they also gave you supply drops, so every day you would feel compelled to sign in, experience all of the game, blackout, multiplayer, and zombies, and then do all your challenges and get all your supply drops and start saving them up so you could then unlock DLC weapons faster and for free. On top of that, there was also 100%er. It only gave you a calling card, but at least it was something. It was something for you to work towards 
And on top of that, you also have the fun of cross-mode progression in Black Ops 4, such as completing specific challenges in Blackout to unlock the Numbers skin for your specialist, which is arguably the most prestigious skin in the entire game, and then take that skin and use it in multiplayer to really make yourself stand out from the people who just simply bought things from the shop. You then look at Black Ops Cold War, and we have virtually nothing. We have Dark Matter, which, like I said, is busted on most of the guns in the game, and it's not even really that big of a deal, considering a Dark Matter equivalent has been in every Call of Duty title since Black Ops 3, which came out six years ago. There's nothing to work for. There's no, like, reason to play the game, right? I just, I don't know. I feel so out of touch with Call of Duty right now. Like, you go and play literally any other game, and there is a constant sense of progression. There is a proper reward structure for the content that you do in virtually every game out there. But here in Black Ops Cold War, it's literally just hit max level for the season because they can't let you level up too much too quickly. You might get burned out. So get to the max level for the season, which is silly, and then go for Dark Matter, but it doesn't even work on half the guns. And then other than that, just, I don't know, basically fuck you. Go buy things from the shop. Like, I don't know. You can get stuff from the Battle Pass, I suppose. But overall, there just isn't anything to do in this game after... Roughly, I would say probably two days of playtime. Like, if you're a competent player, you could do pretty much everything there is to do in Black Ops Cold War's multiplayer in about two days of playtime. I do understand that Treyarch was put in a very bad position with this year's game after having to take over for Sledgehammer Games and Raven Software. It was a really bad situation. It was a horrible dev cycle. But what resulted from all of that is basically just a, a notion of content that has the depth of a paddling pool. Right? There's no actual proper reward structures in this game. It's basically just go play the game for fun, which <laughs> it's always the weirdest thing, right? People always say like, well, Nero, why don't you just like, play the game for fun? It's like, dude, I've been playing COD for fun for like 13, 14 years, right? The core gameplay of COD is still fun. No doubt, right? The core gameplay of just, you know, your guns and your attachments and your perks and running around and capturing do uh, domination flags and, you know, planting bombs and surge and going for high kills and stuff like that. That's all still there. The fun of score streaks is not there in Black Ops Cold War because the new system is awful. And I, I, someone actually brought that up to me on Twitter today and it actually blew my mind because I, I'm so used to this new score streak system that I forgot what it was like to like have that you know, that heart pounding kind of like anticipation as you're going for like your AC-130 or your chopper gunner or what have you. Now you just get your streaks every single game no matter what. And it's not it, it's an afterthought. It's not even enjoyable anymore. But that core COD gameplay, like I was saying... It's still there. It's still there in Cold War, and it's still enjoyable. But here's the thing. A lot of us have been playing COD for like 13, 14 years, right? Or maybe less than that. Maybe five years. Maybe six years. Whatever. We've been playing COD for a very long time. The core gameplay is fun. That's why we still get the game every single year. We love Call of Duty, right? We love that core gameplay loop. But the problem is... We need more than just that core gameplay loop to make the game interesting. If you go back to like Call of Duty 1 and Call of Duty 2, like these are like the most bare bones, like pure shooters out there. There's no customization. There's no leveling up. There's no unlocking things. There's no prestiging. There's nothing. There's just the core gameplay of Call of Duty, which was fun for a lot of people. But even the COD devs back then, they realized like there needs to be more to this game to keep people interested because core gameplay can only take you so far, right? So with Call of Duty 4, suddenly we have prestige mode. We have attachments, we have challenges, we have weapon camos, and that was pretty cool, right? Not only was the core gameplay still there, but we had a lot of extra things on top of that. The core gameplay is the cake, then we had the icing, which is all the customization and all the unlocks and things for us to work towards. Then Modern Warfare 2 came out, right? World of War didn't really do a whole lot to innovate, so when Modern Warfare 2 came out, suddenly... Our kill streaks were different. It wasn't just 357 anymore. We had customizable kill streaks, right? We had chopper gunners, AC 130s, EMPs, tactical nukes. We had even more attachments than before. We had even more camos than before. They revamped the challenge system, so we had a lot more of them. We had pro perks to go for, right? We had so many things to do in Modern Warfare 2. The same was true with Black Ops 1, and it just kind of kept going and kept going and kept going and kept going. Well, in Black Ops Cold War, all those systems are basically gone, right? You level up to level 55, and then you're done. You do that one time, and then you're done forever. Um, there's no leveling up your perks or changing your perks or anything like that. They're the same perks as they were back when the game came out in November. Um, you get new attachments for your guns, I suppose, but all the good ones are at the very end, so you want to level up your guns pretty highly. But by this point, most people have all their guns maxed out. And so, what else is there? Like, you know, there's just... There's just there's nothing to do. There's nothing more to do. And maybe that's by design. 
Uh, maybe it's by design. Maybe they want people kind of quitting early on because they want people to move on into Warzone, which I definitely think that COD multiplayer, at least right now, is definitely just a front. It's a vessel to kind of like push people into Warzone, but maybe they're just kind of okay with that. Maybe they put out just enough content to make people happy for the first few months when the game comes out, and then they kind of just coast, and then the beta for the next game comes out, then the next game comes out, and they repeat the cycle over and over again. It's a really shitty situation, though. It's a very shitty situation where... People are quitting out of apathy as compared to quitting out of completion. I would much rather quit a game because I have beat the game, I've done everything there is to do, and I'm happy with it, as compared to being like, wow, I've virtually done everything in the game, but there wasn't really anything to do, and now I'm just bored. You know what I mean? Like, quitting out of apathy is not a good situation. Quitting out of completion is a good situation. If somebody has to quit, they should quit the game knowing they had a very good experience, they've completed all the content, and they're excited for the next game to come out, right? But now, we're completing the game in about 24, 48 hours of playtime, and we're left for the entire year wondering, what's next? Like, what happened to COD? What, like, that, that's the big question. What happened to COD? You know, back in the day, there was always so much to do. Even in recent years, like I said, Call of Duty World War II, Black Ops 4, there was so much to do in those games. I can't speak for Modern Warfare, I didn't play that game. But still, like, there was so much to do back when. But now it's like, you know, there's... I mean, you can get Dark Matter. I mean, if you want to. It's not going to be fun, though. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know, guys. Is it me? Is it me? Or is Black Ops Cold War genuinely in as bad of a place as I think it is? I mean, obviously, I'm still going to play the game now and then. Obviously, I'm still going to be covering updates and things like that as we progress towards World War II Vanguard. But how long can they keep this up? Like, really, how long can they keep this up? And my big hope, my honest God, my hope in my, in, in my heart of hearts is that Battlefield 2042 is so damn good that Activision is forced to not release garbage like this. And to be clear, I think Black Ops Cold War at its core can be a very good game. Like, its core is good. They're just, like, like I said, it's an ocean that's about as deep as a paddling pool. That's pretty much it. Like, that's, that's like Black Ops Cold War in a nutshell. And I feel like once they have more competition in the form of Battlefield 2042 or even in the form of Halo, then maybe Activision will finally pay attention to normal traditional call of duty multiplayer once again i guess we'll have to wait and see i'm definitely gonna do it i could you know i could talk for another 20 minutes about that topic alone like call of duty and battlefield and so on and so forth but i'm gonna save that for another video for right now i'm going to wrap up this video my little review slash rant of season four here in black ops cold war i hope you guys all enjoyed it if you did consider leaving a like leave your thoughts and feedback on all these topics down in the comment section below thank you all so much for listening and i hope you guys all have a wonderful day